Could a myth be keeping you from becoming a legend in your own business? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. Could a myth or preconceived ideas or my own beliefs or lack of knowledge or information be holding me back from becoming a legend in my own business? Now, there's a lot of myths that we're going to talk about. In fact, we're going to zero in on seven myths that most people over the 25 years that the Entrepreneur Source has helped tens of thousands of people become business owners. These are the things that we've dealt with with the majority of those individuals. Finding the right business will make me successful. That's why we're walking up and down the aisles. We're looking for that right business. What is it? It's not about finding the right business to make you successful, because here's the bad news. Most of you believe that finding the right business is going to create success for you, when in fact, success comes from the inside out. It comes from what you're going to do with a successful business format. So it's not about finding the right business. The secret to success in business is finding a franchise doing something I love. Now, how many of you have ever read an article or a book or a, heard someone say, go do what you know and love and enjoy and success will follow? Okay? That's a myth. If you look in our society, people who go do that and launch their own businesses have a slightly higher failure rate than people who launch franchise businesses that have no background, no knowledge, no experience with that product or service. In fact, if you want to read an excellent book, there's a book called The E-Myth Revisited. Anybody read it? Very good. It's a great book. It'll help you understand why the perception is go start your own business in something you have background, knowledge, love of, and go do that and you'll be successful. In fact, the opposite is true in our society. They create the largest percentage of failures. Why is that? Because they become the technicians of those businesses. So it's not about finding something you love. The key is understanding what makes you comfortable and what things you love and enjoy in life and why and find a business that will create an environment whereby you can do that. Now, we've spent decades creating a science around this of how to do that, and the key is three things. Goals, needs, and expectations. When you focus around your goals, your needs, your expectations from business ownership, and you look for business models that will help you accomplish those, that's how you'll find something you'll end up loving as a byproduct of doing. I'll know the right opportunity when I see it. We talked about that. Most of us believe that's true. Not going to work that well for you if you just keep roaming up and down the aisles hoping to fall in love. Most businesses go belly up. How many of you are afraid that if I start my own business, I might fail? Good. OK, thanks for being honest. That's something you need to consider. What you want to do, though, is try to avoid risk, right? If I can avoid all the risks, then I won't fail. Is that what you really want to achieve, avoiding risk? No. Don't try to avoid or eliminate the risks because you also diminish the opportunity. The key with a franchise business is to manage the risk in a way that allows you to operate a successful business. If I said to you, i got a great business for you, You've got about 84 employees that are typically in the business 24 hours a day. By the way, the turnover ratio is about 300% with the employees, and they're typically teenagers or senior citizens. Are you interested in that business? Not based on those statistics, because there's a lot of risk when you start hearing about those things. But guess what business that is? McDonald's, very good. It's all about managing risk that other people won't manage, and that's what franchise systems and business models are based on. So most businesses don't go belly up if you have a good business model, a system, and you have a franchise that's dedicated to helping you avoid the, or manage the risk that you typically try to avoid. Owning a franchise is like having a boss. The franchise or will dictate everything. How many of you are concerned about the franchise concept because of that? 
I want to be my own boss, right? I want to be independent, okay? And that's okay, because guess what? None of these businesses that you see in this hall today, this weekend, would be here if someone didn't start an independent business. So we're not saying independent businesses are bad, because if it wasn't for businesses starting off that way, there'd be no franchise concepts, okay? So don't be too concerned about the franchisor dictating everything, because all they really care about is your success. The only way a franchisor can ever succeed is having successful franchisees, meaning you, and other people that are working their system and developing the system to grow and, and to prosper. It's called interdependent relationship, not independent. So if you think you want to be the boss, you think you want to be totally independent, you think you want to get up every morning and look in the mirror and call all the shots, then you want to start your own business. Okay? If you're going to do that, make sure you have a lot of help and advice, good mentors, business coach, uh, experts that can help you in all the elements of running a business today. It's complicated. I can't be creative in a franchise. I'm creative. I want to get out and show that creativity in business ownership. Don't you want to do that in your local communities and how you develop and grow your business? And you're thinking, well, a franchise is so restrictive, I can't be creative. Next time you go into McDonald's, look at the menu. Take off hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, Coke, and milkshake. And see how many items are left. There's quite a few. Guess where every single one of those successful menu items came from? Creative franchisees submitting ideas for approval and development collectively by a group. Do you know that every single one of Ray Kroc's menu items failed? Not some of them. Every single one of them failed. The successful menu items came from franchisees all working to improve and develop the product line. Buttermilk biscuits, which is a hallmark of their breakfast items, started out in the South because of competition, and they needed to have buttermilk biscuits on the menu, and it developed into something that's now the largest part of their franchise system, which is breakfast. So you can be creative. Where can you be creative in a franchise? Managing, marketing, and promoting that. Coming up with ideas, sharing them with your franchisee peers and the franchisor. That's how you do that. Now, when's the last time you walked into a McDonald's and saw a vending machine in the lobby that sold pantyhose. You guys missed that one, the newest one? Well, you don't see that one because that was an idea that some franchisees had for McDonald's, and guess what? That one didn't make it. So some of your ideas for your creativity may not fit into the business model. You have to be okay with that. A franchise requires more money than I can afford. Isn't that funny? We started off with that. Franchises typically require more money than most of us can afford. If you're looking at buying it using your own dollars and savings and investments or what you can get from the family or what you've got buried in the backyard in a coffee can. It's not about having the money. It's about using money the way it was created to be used in a business. And how is that? How do you use money in a business? You invest. You use it as a resource, as a tool. It's an integral part of the business environment. The majority of successful businesses in this hall or anywhere wouldn't be here today if they relied on their own dollars to grow and develop or invest in those businesses. So it's okay that you may not have all the money tucked away in the mattress 